So just briefly, um, here's a quick example using QCS Studio. Okay, we have a, a transistor. Uh, you can see here that I've explicitly stated it's a bias point. I just want to make sure that that's completely here, that this transistor is uh, an S parameter model of a transistor. It's not an actual uh, real transistor. Otherwise, we would have biasing networks on the on the gate and the, the drain here. So if I, if I just run a basic you know S parameter simulation like on the tr on the transistor with just uh, you know mashed to, to 50 ohms on each side, you can see I, I have a measurement of the uh, the S21 parameter and I have a measurement of the S22 and S11. Um, but you can see here down at the bottom um, when I when I made this plot I used a function called roulette, which plots the roulette stability factor. Um, so there there there's other ways to check for stability. Uh, there's another expression in the book called mu, and I'll just quickly write that here too. So it looks something like this. Okay, and then there's also mu prime, sometimes it's called mu2. So so those functions are also available here. I just uh, I just wanted to show the roulette stability factor just for clarity. Uh, some people prefer mu. Um, I think it's good to just uh, to use all three. I mean they're all they're all available to you. I think one of the benefits of, of mu though is it gives you like a a sense of uh, localization so if, for example if if uh, if mu is greater than so let's just say that you have a plot like this and this is a plot of mu and it's over frequency let's say that mu is greater than one over most of the frequency but then it dips close to uh, you know to the limit where uh, where mu equals one here what mu does is it, it tells you that you have potentially some instability concerns like at this particular frequency here um, whereas with the roulette stability factor, um, it, it, it doesn't give you kind of the same localized information. So, um, so they all have their, their, their different uses and their different uh, benefits. But you can see here in this example that I have here in QUCS Studio, you can see that the K is less than 1 over like our frequency band of interest here, where I just went from... 2.35 gigahertz to 2.45 gigahertz, just for illustrative purposes. But you can see that uh, that this transistor is not unconditionally stable. Um, so if you wanted it to be unconditionally stable, then we would have to um, stabilize it using uh, the methods that we just discussed. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show you guys how that would be done next. Okay. Um... I just switched computers now. I switched from my tablet to my uh, desktop. Um, I also edited the first part of this video and I didn't realize it was going on for so long and it for over 40 minutes. Uh, I intended for that video to be you know, around the, the 20 minute mark, so sorry about that. I'm really bad at, uh, at judging how long videos are gonna take. Um, so I'll just quickly go through this uh, simple example here of um, uh, stability circles uh, being used in QCS Studio and uh, the roulette stability factor. Uh, so like I said, here's the transistor. Uh, it's biased at 3 volts with uh, a drain current of 20 milliamps. You can see here that um, there's this function called roulette. Um, so you run an S parameter simulation and it will plot the uh, roulette stability factor over the entire frequency range. And you can see here that the uh, roulette stability factor is uh, less than 1 over the entire frequency range. Uh, over here on the Smith chart, you can see if I click on it, there's these two functions called uh, stab S and stab L. So this is the uh, these are the stability circles for the S and L uh, gamma S and gamma L uh, planes. So those are built right into uh, to, to QCS Studio, and you can see that the um, that these stability circles uh, lie on top of of our Smith chart here. Uh, and that's why our roulette stability factor is less than one. Uh, this transistor is not unconditionally stable. Um, so we can stabilize it. Uh, here I can um, shut off this parameter sweep and I can just and I can define a, a value for this input resistor here for, for a second just run it. So you can see here that uh, well essentially if I have the resistor set to zero and I run this, Oops, press enter. Run this. This, this is our initial uh, situation that we had in, in the previous schematic here. Um, but as I start to increase this, so say I set it equal to 5, 
you can see that the stability circles are kind of making their way off of the Smith chart, and I'm seeing an improvement over here in my roulette stability factor. Um, so now if I just enable this parameter sweep again, and I define this as being underscore s, and then I run this, uh, you can see that um, as the input resistor increases, um, my roulette stability factor improves. And you can see that um, if I change my, my scale for my Smith chart, so my the unit circle is right here on this uh, inner part of the Smith chart. So the unit circle is right here on the inner part. And you can see that the stability circles are kind of being shifted off of the unit circle. Um, so this, and, and together with the fact that the roulette stability factor is above zero, um, is why the transistor has been uh, is now uh, considered to be unconditionally stable. So let me just change this limit back. Um, another thing that I wanted to say is the uh, let me just uh, clean this up a little bit here. So NF, this is like the the minimum possible uh, noise figure. Um, so you can see here that when the series resistor is is small, I have a good uh, noise figure of 1.5 dB, but as it goes up, or sorry, as the uh, series input resistor increases, you can see that my my noise figure uh, is degraded. I'm up to 3.6 now, so um, I have good stability. Um, it actually the relative stability factor goes above one when the uh, input resistor is at 12.1. So let's figure out uh, where that guy. So that's this guy, and you can see that my, my noise figure degraded from like 1.5 dB to now it's over 2 dB. Um, also, you can see that the gain has degraded. Uh, so initially, you know, my, my gain is around 11 dB, but then as the resistor increases, you can see that my gain uh, degrades. And at, at 30 ohms, my gain is at 8.5 dB here. So we'll talk a little bit more about uh, what all of these circles or sorry, what, what all these little dashes and stuff mean and how we use them uh, later. Um, I can also add a series, op a series resistor to the output of the transistor. Um, so again, down here, let me just shut off the, uh, the green lines here and just leave the red lines. Over here, um, the unit circle is this black, thin black circle here again. But you can see that as I run the parameter sweep, again, the stability circles kind of move off of the uh, unit circle. Um, at the same time, I roll that stability factor. At first, uh, when the series resistor is small, it's less than one, but then as the resistor increases, um, my this roll stability factor eventually goes above one, uh, which means that the transistor is uh, transitioning from being uh, potentially unstable to unconditionally stable, which is good. That's what we want. Um, having the, uh, the series resistor on the output is actually better than having it on the input for in terms of noise performance, um, because any kind of noise that's generated uh, on the input is potentially um, amplified through the transistor into the output. Um, and again, the noise figure is, you know, it's the relationship between the signal to noise ratio of the input versus the, the output. Um, so by having the series stabilizing resistor here on the output, um, I do have a, my noise figure does degrade uh, somewhat, but not as much. And again, uh, this is the like best possible noise figure. This is not the actual noise figure that I'm seeing. It's just the best possible uh, noise figure that I can hope to achieve um, is being slightly degraded. So, you know, I have to work in order to actually meet uh, this noise figure. And we're going to cover that uh, later on um, after, you know, when we get to the to that section of, of, of the chapter. Um, essentially, it, it has to do with, uh, you know, designing matching networks such that your impedances are, are mapped from uh, where this, these blue marks are here, the S11, to where that optimum location is here, represented by these uh, red lines. Um, and again, having the stabilization resistor on the output, it degrades my gain. The other thing we can do is we can design a, a feedback network like this. So again, I'm just going to clear up this noise figure plot here. Um, so you can see that the, the feedback network, um, it improves my stability. It moves the stability circles off of the Smith chart. Um, it means that we're, we have an unconditionally stable situation represented over here by the, uh, um, the roulette stability factor. Um, the good thing about using feedback instead of having series resistors is the fact that it, it 
it doesn't degrade your gain as much. So you can see here that my, my gain is still up around 10 dB. And then in terms of the noise figure, you can see that uh, it is also degraded slightly. But these are all, uh, you know, there's trade-offs between all these different approaches. So that's it. I just wanted to show you a quick example of using QCS Studio to assess stability of transistors using the S parameter files. I wanted to show you how the uh, stability circles can be automatically generated. Same with the, uh, uh, you know, the roulette stability factor. And uh, I just wanted to show how, how easy it is in QCS. And this is the approach that we're going to be taking uh, for all of our design examples that we do for this course, like I mentioned. All right, so that's it. Thank you.